the addresses of the parcels, um, stating the water was $10,000, the sanitary sewer was also $10,000. Uh, so each parcel is going to be assessed $20,000 uh, for a total levy of $60,000. To date, I have not received any objections. Um, and again, just to go over the, the payments of the assessments, they can be paid in full. Um, if they're made within 30 days of the hearing, uh, they're interest free. Um, also, you can make a minimum payment of 25%, or if you choose to do nothing, um, it's levied to Ramsey County over 15 years at 6% interest. Uh, so tonight, staff recommends that uh, the council approve the resolution for adoption of the assessment rule. Okay, very good. Uh, first, before I open up the public hearing, are there any uh, questions on the report? Ms. Juneman? It might be overkill, but because there's a sentence in our report that says that last year the council already approved assessment objection waiver agreements for all three of the Benetton properties, um, could you explain how that affects this briefly? Um, yep, Mayor, uh, members of the council, how it affects that is if somebody came up to object tonight, basically they waived their rights last year. Um, and that's why we move forward with the project is to secure financing. Thank you, I just wanted to make that clear. Thank you. Okay, any other further questions? Uh, hearing no other further questions, then at this time, then I will open up the public hearing to take any public comment. And so if there's anyone here who wishes to address this issue or to uh, raise an objection, if you happen to be one of the property owners. Doesn't look like there's any anyone here for this particular public hearing. And then once, of course, I uh, bang the gavel again, then that will close the public hearing. Okay, so with that then, I'll close the public hearing. Okay, Mr. Nephew. I would like to move the resolution for the adoption of the assessment rule for the Linwood Sewer Water Extension as part of the overall Ferndale Geranium Area Street Improvements City Project 07-14. Second. second. Okay, we have a motion and a second before us. Any other further discussion? Uh, hearing none, Mr. Rossbach, first of all. Aye. Mr. Nephew. Aye. Mayor votes aye. Ms. Juneman. Aye. Mr. Jelly. Aye. Uh, next then with this, uh, um, we also then have the resolution for, well that we just did that, we have the next thing with our public hearing is the dynamic uh, display sign ordinance, the second reading. Thank you. On July 28th, the City Council adopted the first reading of the dynamic display sign ordinance with revisions to the ordinance, including increasing the time allowed for message changeovers from 12 seconds to one minute for off-site signs and from 10 minutes to five minutes for on-site signs, as well as allowing variations in on-site changeover rates for signs approved through the comprehensive sign plan process. In addition to the City Council's changes, the City Attorney has, since, uh, since that first reading, has reviewed the ordinance and recommended minor modifications, which I've outlined in your staff report, and we'll briefly go over here. Some minor language modifications, additional language that clarifies content substitution for commercial messages versus non-commercial messages. And then also, um, since the Community Design Review Board and the Planning Commission since their review, uh, staff has recommended that all dynamic display signs be licensed yearly. So the city attorney has recommended removing the conditional use permit requirement to ensure there are not two types of regulatory processes for uh, those billboard signs. And then I wanted to point out um, some comments received today by Council Member Rosbach, and I'll refer you to page four of the ordinance, item G. And this is a correction I'd like to make for tonight's uh, second reading. Um, it's in regard to the incentives allowed for these off-site dynamic display billboards. Um, this again is the voluntary and uncompensated removal of off-premise signs for the allowance of these dynamic display signs. So you'll see, um, Item one 
talks about a person or sign operator may obtain a conditional use permit for a dynamic display sign on one surface of an existing off-premises sign if the following requirements are met. So the first correction I'd like to make, and I had missed this, I apologize, is again, we're uh, recommending that the conditional use permit uh, be removed. So we would just take out the word the words conditional use. So a person or sign operator may obtain a permit for a dynamic display sign. And then the item that Council Member Rossback brought to my attention was item B, which is found on the next page. And this again is um, one of the items that a sign would have to meet in order to, to obtain this permit. Item B, and it, it's, a, it's a, even a hard one to read. The city has not previously issued a dynamic display sign permit based on the removal of the particular sign service relied upon in this permit application. And this uh, was language that was taken from Egan's ordinance, as you may recall, through this whole process. And it's a little uh, tricky, as it, it takes a while to read it a few times, but I think what it means is that the city can't issue a sign permit for a sign that was supposed to be removed by a previous permit. So I think in, in light of what it's really intended to mean, um, it, it could probably be removed from that entire ordinance because it's, it's covered at, in essence. The city would not issue a permit for a sign that was intended to be removed. So I would recommend that that item B remo be removed. And then one last item as I was reviewing this today is I noticed that in this section we talk about off-premise and on-premise signs, and in the rest of the code, we talk about on-site and off-site. So I would recommend that um, that terminology in just that section refer to off-site and on-site. So I apologize for that confusion, but I wanted to bring that up um, for you tonight. Then finally, uh, with that brief review um, of the public hearing of this second reading of the dynamic display sign ordinance, city staff is recommending approval of the dynamic display sign and licensing ordinance amendments with modifications that I just discussed here tonight, as well as uh, the city council modifications from the first reading. Also approving the resolution which would set a licensing fee for dynamic display signs at a rate to match the sign permit fees. And currently those fees are $160 for freestanding signs and $105 for wall signs. And then finally, the item which was tabled uh, during the last meeting would be to consider requiring the community center sign and all city hall campus signs to be reviewed by the community design review board for an approved comprehensive sign plan. So with that, I'd be happy to answer any of your questions. Okay. Thank you very much. Ms. Juneman. Actually, it's an attorney question, and it's possibly not necessary, but just for verification. We've changed now from conditional use permit to a sign license. Do we lose anything in the translation? Uh, Madam Mayor, members of the council, uh, one of the reasons that I didn't like the idea of having both was because it's redundant and hard to justify both. With a license, you either qualify for it or you don't. You follow the rules and you get your license, and it's uh, something that can be taken away simply because it's black and white. Um, a cup, on the other hand, um, allows a lot more of a subjective analysis of what they're doing. And mm -hmm. I think it's much more clear to someone applying for one of those licenses to know what the rules are and to either get one or don't. They either fit or they don't. Right. Okay. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Nephew? That made me think of another question. Um, I have a, a couple of typos and an observation, and before I forget it, the question that was just raised to me, which is, does switching to a licensing system rather than a conditional use permit remove discretion from the city with respect, I'm, mainly I'm concerned about the, the CDRB and comprehensive sign plans, because typically a license is something that either you get it or don't, it's, it's purely ministerial. Um, can you just address that as far as the legal land use law side of it? Sure, uh, Madam Mayor, Council Member Nephew. I think you could still definitely run a, an application for a license by the CDRB. I mean, there certainly are other aspects to the, to the sign that are going to have to be looked at. So I would expect that it's not going to completely, um, oh, it might com take away authority completely because it is a license, but I would hope that they'd still be involved in the process, put it that way. Especially when you start looking at comprehensive sign plans, things of that nature, all of those would go through the CDRB. Because that has to do with design. Okay. 
All right, so mainly it's the comprehensive sign plan that I'm worried about where we want them to have uh, aesthetic control to decide whether Review. particular changes and uh, you know variations from the, the code as written are justified. As I understand what the CDRB does, yes. Okay, thank you. Um, the, the typos, the first one uh, actually is on page one. It, it just really entertained me when I was reading it. At the last sentence, or yeah, the very last word in the first paragraph um, says ordinance, but it's spelled like uh, bombs and bullets and stuff like that. So I, thought, I think that's fine. Yeah, it's, it's a very explosive issue, I'll I guess. It that way. So um, I appreciated that. <laughs> uh, in pa packet page number 50, where we actually have the resolution, uh, it says LADS. I'm wondering uh, in, in parentheses on the list of different kinds of technologies. I think that that's probably was supposed to be LCDs and, and a, a spell checker uh, substituted something else. Could or you possibly something I'm not aware of. detail where that first typo was again? Page one of the. The first typo was page one of the ordinance. Is that first the, the LADS typo is uh, page packet number page 50, it's the resolution. The, the, the first typo is just in the staff report. It's not part of the ordinance. Sorry. Actually, so. there's another one in the ordinance. <laughs> the third Does whereas. Does it say in the ordinance as well? The third whereas is misspelled. Oh. <gasps> just notice it now. I read it twice. Yes, thank it you. is supposed to be LCDs, right? Yes. Yeah. Thank you. Um, and then the, the final thing I want to just say as a comment at this point, because I, uh, we had some discussion at the last meeting uh, about this, and there's the, the question of should there be differences between off-site and on-site as far as the turnover time. Um, and I'm not sure if it was clearly articulated at the last meeting, but it seems to me that in the places where we have on-premises signs, uh, it is justified to have longer turnovers because unlike the freeway, there are much more frequent and sudden changes taking place in the traffic. Um, the traffic is going faster on Highway 36, but you don't have a lot of choices, uh, whereas if you're going down the street and you see a sign and it changes to something, you say, oh, that's where I'm going to be going, someone's more likely to suddenly turn in immediate response to a wayfinding sign than they are for a billboard that's not relating to the, the current environment. So I don't, I don't know if that's something to articulate in, in the explanation for the differences between the sign things, but it seems to my mind as a, a valid reason uh, for safety purposes to not have as frequent of changeovers in uh, more complex traffic navigation situations like somebody driving down White Bear Avenue and, and uh, pedestrians walking out in front of them like they don't on the highway and, and so forth. That was it for now. Okay. Um, are there any uh, studies uh, related to um, what Mr. Nephew's been talking about? As far as time changeover rate, Madam Mayor? Well, with regard to if you're on a slower moving road versus a highway, and talking about the connection between the timing of the light, the signs, uh, and the changeover and the traffic. Because I know that we were given other documentation with regard to you know, like freeways and highways. So I, I'm wondering if there's any studies having to do with um, the on-premise sites and on like a street like White Bear Avenue. Madam Mayor knows you're looking at me and well, I, don't I can know tell you that certainly I haven't seen one. But um, Madam Mayor, I can't... Um, recall running into a specific study study which um, went into highway signs versus you know on-premise signs but there there's plenty of studies regarding the changeover rate and how that might impact traffic as far as how fast they're going okay and those were made mention of in um, throughout this process I, I apologize I, I don't have like um, the SEH study that was conducted uh, for the city of Minnetonka when Clear Channel installed the billboard there. SRF. SRF, pardon me. Yes, so there's been some studies in that regard. Okay. And then, and when we're looking at um, determining the amount of cost for a uh, signed permit, I, I understand that 
we have to be able to quantify really kind of how much staff time that would be used for monitoring so it's rationally related to the cost of that permit. 